In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My Lord and my God, I firmly believe that you are here, that you see me, that you hear me. I adore you with profound reverence. I beg your pardon for my sins and the grace to spend this time of prayer fruitfully. Immaculate Mother, Saint Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me. So this is our first um, meditation for our recollection. And um, the topic that uh, we will reflect on um, is this, um, uh, passionately loving the world. So, so passionately loving the world because um, the world, uh, this world that um, we now live in, uh, in in this particular period of history and in this uh, particular place of the globe. Um, well, this is the place of our encounter with Christ. Um, in our homes, um, in our offices, um, in our schools, um, in the factory, uh, Christ is there waiting for us. And this is why um, we live in this world, or this is uh, our Christian calling, we live in this world with hope. Because, as uh, St. Paul tells us, it is in this hope, hope for heaven, uh, that we are saved. So, um, so this... Um, this meditation, and the title of the meditation, Passionately Loving the World, is actually taken from a homily that uh, St. Jose Maria Escriva uh, preached in 1968 when he celebrated uh, Mass in the campus of the University of Navarre um, in Pamplona, Spain. It's a university um, whose um, uh, moral um, formation, religious formation, spiritual formation is entrusted to the prelature of the work. Um, so the, the first uh, such university um, that, uh, so the impulse of St. Jose Maria Escriva, uh, that was the first university that was established. Um, and um, uh, Saint Jose Maria uh, went there um, to celebrate Mass. It was held not in a in a chapel, not in an oratory. You know? um, there were just too many people um, who were expected to attend. So um, it was celebrated in in uh, the open field, in the open air, um, and uh, and it was a very appropriate. Um, setting uh, for the Mass that St. Tosa Maria uh, celebrated in 1968 um, and for the, the theme of the homily um, that he chose to give, passionately loving the world, um, which uh, touches on the central message that uh, the Lord had entrusted uh, to him to spread and to which he dedicated his life um, to preaching about, namely that um, ordinary work um, is to be sanctified. That uh, this is the this is the path to holiness that our Lord calls the majority of uh, of the baptized to remain in the world and sanctify themselves in in the world. Um, that the uh, through temporal realities, um, um, well, our, uh, men and women who are ordinary Christians, um, in and through temporal realities, um, they find Christ. Um, so temporal realities provide not only the setting, but also the raw material um, that God has given them to offer their whole lives as worship 
to the Lord. Um, so, and, and when we say temporal realities, we refer to everything, um, everything that takes place in the home, in the office, uh, in school, in the world of culture, of business, of politics, social media. Um, that, that is where Christ is waiting for us. That is where we have to find Christ. Um, that is where we have to make Christ present um, through, our, through our joy, through our faith, and through our hope. Um, a person might ask, but isn't this world that, um, well, we should passionately love, isn't this um, world disfigured by sin? Isn't it uh, dominated, uh, uh, at least on the surface, that's what it, um, it seems, um, always dominated and ruled by the powers of darkness? Um, uh, is this this world that um, our Lord calls the ordinary Christian to passionately love? Um, and the answer is yes, um, um, because the world has been created good by God. Um, and um, its beauty has only been disfigured um, by the sins of men, by their pride, their selfishness. Um, um, this world that seems to be running away from God, um, and um, which uh, seems to be under the control of the powers of evil. Well, um, this world, as it has come from the, the hands of God, um, this world is, is good. Um, in, in fact, in the book of Genesis, we are told that when, when God um, finished the creation of the world um, in uh, six days and then he rested on the seventh, when he saw what he did, he, he said, God said it was very good, huh? so very good. And it was also into this world that um, Jesus Christ was sent by the Father. 2,000 years ago, he took flesh from the womb of the Blessed Virgin Mary, and he was born into this world um, so that he might redeem this world with his blood. Um, and, and now the Lord has entrusted this world to us um, uh, so that uh, through our faith, through our hope um, expressed in the work that we carry out, um, we restore it to the, to the Lord by transforming the world from within um, with the light of our faith and, and the fire and, and love that, um, that the Holy Spirit gives us. And the Holy Spirit, whom our Lord um, won for us as a gift um, by his passion and death on the cross. Um, so the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, which um, took place uh, uh, the day of Pentecost, well, that was fruit of Calvary. And, and that's why um, Jesus, before suffering his, um, his agony, uh, praying to the Father uh, in the Cenacle, uh, he prayed, Father, I do not pray that you take them out of the world, uh, referring to the apostles and to uh, all his disciples. Father, I do not pray that you take them out of the world, but that you keep them from evil. Okay? Okay? From... Um, from the evil that uh, that is at work um, also, um, uh, and which entered um, into this world uh, because of original sin um, and our own personal sins. And um, well, uh, and, and here we have the three enemies of the soul. Okay, so uh, traditionally in in the Catechism we are told that um, well, um, we go to heaven we face three enemies. Okay, um, one is um, the world and the flesh and the devil. Okay, so by, by the world here, we don't mean the world as it was created um, by God because that world is good, but we're referring to the allurements of the world, huh? the worldliness of, of, um, of the world. Huh? And, uh, and then the flesh, our own flesh, uh, disordered passions that pull us downward. And of course, the devil, huh? who is the mastermind behind, 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 behind all of this. Huh? So uh, Jesus nevertheless prayed, Father, I do not pray that you take them out of the world. Um, um, but that you keep them from evil. Yeah? And, um, and that's why we have to um, love the world passionately, yeah? because, because 
after the passion, death, and resurrection of our Lord, and then the fruit of that, which was the pour, outpouring of the Holy Spirit, heaven has already begun. Um, um, the kingdom of, of God um, is the preaching of Jesus is, is at hand. Um, although not yet fully and perfectly, um, but yes, um, uh, the kingdom of heaven has been incoated. Um, thanks to our Lord's suffering and death. Um, and, and now, uh, the Lord counts on us uh, to bring this saving work to completion. And, and that's why we're, we're called to work in the Lord's vineyard. Um, uh, and, um, and we work in the Lord's vineyard um, with that hope um, that uh, by doing so, well, we will yield, as Jesus Christ uh, promised, um, uh, fruit that will last. Um, so fruits of the love of God, um, fruits of... Um, Salvation of souls, the glory of God and the salvation of souls. And the, the faith, hope, and charity, um, thanks to which our Lord and uh, the Blessed Trinity dwells in our hearts. Um, so it's, it's so important to keep this in mind. Uh, that God created the world from nothing so that through the created world and this material world, um, uh, we might the Lord might give himself to us um, through Christ and the Holy Spirit. And also that we in turn, also through the world, um, the, the work that we carry out um, to transform this world and to make it a better place to live in. So we might give ourselves to God in Christ through the Holy Spirit. So it's the raw material, uh, the raw material that, um, that God uh, so to speak, uses to give himself to us and the raw material that, that God wants us to use to give ourselves um, to him. Uh, and um, and act actually, at the, the Holy Mass, um, uh, this is what um, the offertory prayer reminds us of because when we, um, when the priest um, uh, gets the offering of, uh, of the bread in, during the the offertory, well, he, he lifts up that, uh, that bread that um, he will consecrate uh, shortly afterwards. And then, well, as he lifts it up uh, to God, he says, Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation. To your goodness, we have this bread to offer. Fruit of the earth and work of human hands, it will become for us the bread of life. So, so this, this bread, um, which is fruit of the earth, um, which is work of human hands, um, well, uh, God uses so that um, thanks to that consecration, um, Jesus, who is the bread of life, gives himself to us. Right? And, um, and in the same way also, when he gets the, the wine, blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, through your goodness, we have this wine to offer, fruit of the vine and work of human hands. Um, it will become our spiritual, spiritual drink. So we see this is what took place um, at Calvary. Yeah. Um, and Jesus um, offered himself, uh, his body and blood, uh, and in himself, through the action of the Holy Spirit, he drew all things uh, uh, to himself in order to offer that to the Father. And, and this, this work of redemption, which our Lord brought to its climax at Calvary, well, it is uh, renewed in a sacramental way um, um, under the appearances of, of bread and wine consecrated to become the body and blood of Christ um, every time the Holy Mass is, is celebrated. Um, and, um, and this is why, um, um, well, when suffering, pain, and, and death entered this world because of original sin, God, in order to redeem the world, sent his only begotten Son to take on our flesh you know, so that he might redeem this world eh? and, and you and me along with it because we're part of this world from, from slavery to sin to death and the devil. Huh? And, and this Jesus did. Huh? Uh, he redeemed this world by taking upon himself the full weight of the suffering, pain, and death that original sin and our own personal sins merited. Huh? And, and that's why uh, St. Paul, um, referring to this mystery, uh, he, he said, this is the second epistle to the Corinthians, for our sake, God made Jesus Christ, 
God, God made him, Jesus Christ, to be sin. Um, he who knew no sin, and Jesus Christ was sinless, but he took upon himself all the, all the punishment, um, all the suffering that were due to our sins, so that uh, in Christ we might become the righteousness of God. Um, and, and this is what took place during Jesus' entire life. Um, because, um, you know, from, from Bethlehem all the way to Calvary, Jesus' life was lived under the shadow of the cross. Um, and, and on the cross, Jesus won his victory. Um, by his passion and death, we have been saved. Um, and, and that's why, um, well, St. Jose Maria, you know, he, he says that uh, the cross of Jesus um, was his victory. It's a plus sign. Um, it's not something negative. It's, um, it's not something that, um, well, um, we uh, use to rebel against our Lord, um, but uh, quite the contrary, because um, uh, through his passion and death, Je Jesus won for us the outpouring of the Holy Spirit, um, and, and therefore um, won the victory over, over sin, over, um, over death, and over the devil. Huh? And, and that's why, um, you know, sh should our Lord um, permit us um, to, sh to have a share in his cross, um, um, well, that is a share um, in, in the work of the, Holy, of, of the redemption, huh? because the Holy Spirit huh, is, is fruit of our sharing in the cross of Christ. And, and so all the challenges, um, what does that mean? It means that all the challenges that, um, that we have to face, um, uh, life is not without its challenges, and, and everybody has his own share of, um, of uh, suffering, of contradiction, of trial. Um, so um, all the challenges that we have to face at home, in the office, in school, um, um, well, all of that um, must be used as an uh, opportunity uh, so that we are able to uh, um, to be leaven, uh, the gospel leaven of, of uh, our Lord's peace, of our Lord's joy um, um, in, uh, in society, wherever um, our Lord has um, called us uh, to serve him. Mm -hmm. um, so, well, we can ask ourselves whether, you know, um, you know, we face this world um, um, and all the challenges it, it brings, big or small, um, with that faith that our Lord is waiting for us there. Uh, and, uh, and it's precisely in those things especially that uh, we find uh, perhaps difficult, that we don't understand, um, that, that the grace of Christ is waiting for us. Um, um, I, I read this anecdote that, you know, might illustrate um, what... Um, this means in practice, um, you know, there was a, it, it was, it was uh, supper time and um, uh, this man, he comes home from, from work and, um, well, his daughter is there, his wife is there, and then um, the wife, um, you know, puts uh, on the table uh, burnt toast, you know, and then gives him something, uh, a jam, huh? and um, well, uh, so the the the, um, the um, this man at the end of the day, well, he 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 puts the jam on his toast and starts eating the the toast, and then asks starts making conversation with his um, with his daughter who's there at the table, um, asking her how the day went, um, and. Um, and then the, the daughter who well, tells the anecdote says that she overhears her mother uh, then apologizing to um, her husband, you know, uh, that uh, she had to serve burnt toast. And then, uh, well, the husband just tells um, his wife, well, I, I, I like to eat burnt toast. Uh, and then he continues talking to his daughter, asking her how, how her day went. Um, and, um, and, well, the supper time... Um, went on uh, very, in a very um, relaxed way. And then uh, at the end of the day, um, the, the daughter, you know, uh, goes to, the, to her dad um, before bedtime and, and um, asks him, uh, Daddy, you really don't like burnt toast. Huh? And um, well, the father uh, smiled and embraced uh, his daughter and, and told his daughter, um, 
well, you know, eating burnt toast doesn't uh, do me any harm, you know, doesn't harm anybody. But if I had said a, um, a, a complaining, a negative remark, you know, that would have hurt your mother. And then, um, so that's how went the way the, the, um, uh, the story went. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's an example of how, you know, uh, uh, well, we, we are called to find Christ huh? in well, all the events, um, uh, all the situations we may find ourselves in uh, during the day. Um, you know, living all of this with, um, with, with faith and with charity, knowing that well, we find our Lord there. Huh? So, um, well, we, we bring huh, the victory of Christ there through our good example, our cheerful smile, our positive and constructive way of, of facing different issues, big or small. Huh? So, um, and, um, and well, how wonderful th this is, you know, and how it helps other people move forward um, and, um, and find Christ um, in, um, in otherwise um, well, very, uh, uh, very difficult circumstances. Um? And um, so, um, so these are things that we can um, ask ourselves, um, you know, whether uh, you know, faith leads us to see uh, the Lord there in, um, you know, in the, in the challenges that I have to face every day, you know, the joys, the sorrows, the ups, the downs, um, whether I'm healthy or whether I'm sick, well, um, well Christ is to be found there. Hmm? So, um, well, I, I just want to perhaps point out three things uh, that um, would be good to keep in mind. Huh? Uh, to always, um, you know, be close to the cross of Jesus. Um, uh, and uh, in, in that way, uh, show our, our faith huh? that Christ is to be found huh? uh, in the everyday circumstances. Um, you know, that, uh, no matter what, um, well, what, um, what sacrifice this um, may require. So just three things. Um, the prayer, we need prayer. We need um, to work with constancy to the best of our ability, and we need to work with hope. Um, so three things um, uh, to show our Lord that we are really um, determined um, uh, to, uh, to seek him, find him, and love him, and serve him. Um, um, in the ordinary circumstances of our day. So prayer, work, and hope. Um, and, and here the first, um, the first um, uh, reflection that um, can help us is that story in the gospel about um, Martha and, and Mary, um, uh, recounted by St. Luke. Um, you know, the this, this story goes, you know, uh, Jesus went, um, to um, to Bethany, where Martha, Mary, and, and Lazarus um, lived, and um, Martha welcomed him and his disciples um, uh, to her home. It, uh, so it, it was um, yeah, for supper time, and, and Martha had to prepare a supper. Um, um, you know, all of a sudden, because uh, well, it, it, it seems that Jesus arrived uh, unannounced. Huh? And so, uh, so Martha was um, was occupied and very busy about uh, preparing the table, cooking the food, while her sister Mary um, just seated at our Lord's feet and um, listened to his words um, as he was talking to his uh, apostles. And then, uh, well, uh, Martha goes up to Jesus because um, she's annoyed that um, you know Mary apparently is doing nothing. Uh, not, not not helping, not lending her a helping hand. You know she had so much work to do, and then when well, she goes straight to Jesus, that's that's how that's how um, you know close they were. They were really good friends, Jesus and and uh, the three siblings, and complains to Jesus, Lord, is it no concern of yours that my sister Mary has left me to do all of these house chores alone? You know you should tell her to help me. And then. Um, that reply of uh, Jesus, um, 
So Martha, Martha, you are troubled, you're anxious about so many things, huh? and you're forgetting that only one thing is necessary. Um, so Mary has chosen the best part, and it will not be taken away from her. Okay, so you know, I think we have a, a very good um, illustration of what we mean huh? by, well, uh, work, huh? uh, prayer, huh? and, and hope. Huh? So, so we have, of course, Martha, she was working and she was doing something very good. In fact, that was a service. Huh? She wanted to do a good job um, in uh, preparing a good meal for um, Jesus and his apostles uh, at the end of a, you know, a hard day. And, um, but uh, she forgot um, that what she had to do was um, in the, turn that work into prayer. Huh? And um, uh, because only in that way would she be able to find Christ there in what she was doing. Huh? And, and that's, that's why also Jesus told her, you know, uh, Mary, your sister, has chosen the best part. Huh? Listen to my word. And, and that will not be taken away from her. So, you know, Jesus, we were telling Martha, you know, uh, you know continue what you're doing, but do it peacefully serenely in, in God's presence, do it for the love of God, and you would have chosen the best part too while doing your, your work. So, um, so let's uh, keep this in mind. Yes, we have to work um, because um, through our work, um, uh, God gives himself to us, yes, and, um, and we are able to give ourselves to him and to um, those around us too. Um, and, and so work, yeah, and work hard and work competently, but um, but always for love, and that, that's why we need prayer. Huh? Because um, unless we, um, unless we are prayerful souls, and, and this means that we need to, of course, spend um, some time every day, just exclusive time with our Lord, as we see Mary doing here. You know, uh, listening to the words of Jesus, meditating on them, treasuring them in her heart. Unless we spend a few a few minutes every day with exclusive time with our Lord, well, we won't have the graces and the strength, you know, uh, while we're working to turn that work into prayer. Um, so so um, we, we pray while we work, huh? and we work uh, while we pray. Okay? So, and, and in that way also, we, we work with a hope for heaven. Um, so, and um, so our, our Lord doesn't want us huh, to be troubled, anxious, and panicky. Huh? Uh, because perhaps with many things to do, well, yes, there's there's a lot to do, and it's good, huh? but um, always um, uh, with a view huh? to finding Christ, to loving Him, and to and to serving Him. Huh? And in this way, also, um, well, if if things don't turn out the way we want them to, well, we offer them, we offer that contradiction to our Lord uh, as well. Okay. Then the other. Um, um, uh, like um, um, like in the gospel, um, the, we can here also meditate and relate it to the topic we're reflecting on. Uh, our Lord's uh, parable of the talents. Okay. Um, so you know there was there was a rich um, uh, lord, um, landlord, and he had three stewards, okay? and. Um, and to one steward, he gave five, five talents. Um, and then to another steward, he gave uh, two talents. And then to the third uh, servant, he gave, he entrusted um, one talent. And then he left um, for a long journey, and then he went back. And then afterwards, he called those servants and uh, asked them to render an account of the talents that he had entrusted to them. Okay? And so, well, the parable goes that we have uh, the first steward who um, um, was entrusted with five talents, and he tells the master, "Okay, Lord, ma master, you've uh, you entrusted to me five talents. Here are five talents in addition." Um, and um, and then the the words of the master, uh, "Well done, good and faithful servant, because you've been faithful over little things. Um, enter into the joy of your master." So, so the things that God entrusts to us, you know, through our work. Um, um, uh, really, they're, they're very small in comparison to the heavenly reward huh, that is awaiting us. Huh? And, um, and, and so let's, let's work hard, let's work industriously, huh? um, 
and let's work with a view um, uh, to loving God more and serving God more and, and serving our, our neighbor and loving our, our neighbor. In that way, we will also be rewarded uh, with um, uh, a share in the joy of um, our Lord himself. Okay? And, and that's what um, the, the other um, steward did who, who was entrusted with, with um, two talents. You know, yeah, he, he worked. Um, and, uh, and God rewarded him with the same reward, enter into the joy of your master. So uh, this is what we see here, work, yes? Those, um, those servants, they did what they could, yeah? And that's what our Lord wants us to do, you know, to do what we can, do our best out of love for him and for neighbor, and he'll do the rest. Huh? And we will yield fruit that will last, huh? uh, namely faith, hope, and charity, huh? which are the virtues uh, thanks to which we will be able to possess God um, uh, here on earth already. And then if we are faithful, if we persevere, then also forever in the next life. Huh? They enable us to enter into the joy of the, our master. Okay. And well, we have this, this last one, the, the one, one who received the one talent. It was really a small thing, you know, but he did nothing. Okay? He didn't work. So why perhaps did laziness get the better of him? Huh? Uh, was it because... He felt envious of um, the other two uh, stewards. Was it because he pitied himself? And, um, and so he expected that uh, since he had been entrusted with the least number of talents, only one, that the Lord would not really care what he did for, with, that, with, with, those, with that talent. So what was he hoping for? What did he want to achieve? Huh? So there's much that we can uh, meditate on, uh, this attitude of laziness, sloth, um, and perhaps self-pity um, and on, on the part of that, um, of that uh, you know, uh, steward. And then lastly, uh, we can meditate on, a, on yet a th another parable, um, also about a steward, but, um, but it's, the, the parable is different. You know, it's the parable of the unjust steward. Okay, so uh, well, you're, you're familiar with this uh, parable also from St. Luke. You know, uh, there was a steward, a rich master, and this uh, steward was cheating. You know, he was stealing from uh, what the master was entrusted him, entrusting him with. And, and the master found out and said, well, you, you better be careful. You're, you know, you're fired. Huh? So you just prepare yourself because you're out of here. And so what, did, what this, uh, this unjust steward did, you know, um, you know, he he started going to the matter, master's uh, you know, debtors and said, "Well, how much do you owe the master, my master?" And then one says, "Maybe, well, ten thousand pesos." And then the the unjust says, "Okay, you 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 get your your um, your 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 uh, uh, you how much you owe?" And then you 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 may you instead of ten thousand, just put five five thousand. I'll I'll approve it, you know. And then the other one said, "Well, how much do you owe?" And then he said, "Maybe about uh, well, um, maybe five thousand. He says, "Okay, you you get um, you get the um, uh, the I O U, and the, you you just put uh, put three. Huh? And so, in other words, you know, all of those um, those evil. Uh, people they connived and um, and uh, and so what happened was that that uh, that unjust steward afterwards well he had many friends so that um, even though he was fired from his job well he still had people to uh, count on and the amazing thing about this parable is that uh, the master commended this unjust steward for being so street smart, so resourceful, you know, so quick at uh, doing what um, he wanted to do, which was to secure his future after being dismissed. Um, and, um, and well, the, the master said, well, the sons of this world um, are so passionate and single-minded and resourceful and determined at achieving their worldly goals. Um, and, and they get it. Um, but the sons of light are so timid, they're so inhibited, they're not without initiative and resourcefulness, they're half-hearted at working for the kingdom of heaven. Mm -hmm. So, uh, well, that, that hope, um, that really single-mindedly pursuing heaven, you know? So, uh, it reminds um, us of that point in the way where Saint Jose Maria 
uh, writes, you know, about this, you know, single-mindedly serving our Lord and work, working for the glory of God. Um, so he says, you tell me uh, that you want, you know, to uh, be a saint. Hmm? Well, very good. But do you want to, as a miser longs for gold, as a mother loves her child, as an ambitious person craves for his honors and power, or as a wretched sensualist seeks his pleasure? So, no, then you don't want to. Okay? So, really. So, we have to give our Lord the very best, our best shot. And, and, that's, to, and, and that's why we have to passionately love, um, you know, uh, well, this, this world that we have, um, that has been entrusted to us, because there we, we find our Lord and we serve Him. Okay? Let, let's ask our, our, our Mother Mary um, to help us find Christ and to serve Him um, in the ordinary things of our day. I thank you, my God, for the good resolutions, affections, and inspirations that you've communicated to me in this meditation. I beg your help in performing them. My Immaculate Mother, St. Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me. Examination of Conscience, Act of Presence of God Saint Jose Maria reminds us, Your ordinary contact with God takes place where your fellow men, your yearnings, your work, and your affections are. Can I apply these words to my life? Is my hope based on God's omnipotence and mercy? St. Paul reminds us that God has destined us to be saints from before the foundation of the world. Does my awareness of being so singularly chosen by God lead me to be very ambitious in the struggle for holiness and in my apostolate? Lift up your eyes and see how the fields are already white for the harvest. Am I aware that God has given me the world as an inheritance and asks me to help in extending his kingdom? Do I broaden my outlook so as to avoid seeing things only from a human point of view? St. Peter exhorts us always to be prepared to make a defense to anyone who calls you to account for the hope that is in you. Do I present Christ's message clearly and positively as the only light capable of giving men hope?
Truth is the light that gives meaning and value to charity, says Benedict XVI, Caritas in Veritate No. 3. Do I always speak the truth? Do I present it attractively without trying to impose it on others? God, in creating us, takes a risk with our freedom. He wants our story to be a true story, composed of authentic decisions and not a fiction or a game, St. Jose Maria reminds us. How do I respond to this expression of divine confidence? Do I manage to present my faith in all its beauty as a gift from God and not just a set of rules? There is something holy, something divine, hidden in the most ordinary situations, and it is up to each one of you to discover it, St. Maria tells us. Do I discover in my family, in my work, in my relaxation, this hidden divine something which helps me to materialize my Christian life? Am I generous in helping apostolic undertakings, including financially? Do I give willingly? Do I encourage others to do so also, explaining to them the great contributions these apostolates make to society? act of contrition. Holy Mary, our hope, seat of wisdom, pray for us.
<clears throat> In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death, Amen. Saint Gabriel, pray for us. Saint Paul, pray for us. Good morning, everyone. As we attend this recollection, let us keep in mind that we are all called to be saints. For that, we need to strive for sanctity and apostolate. That is, to be holy and help others become holy. Of course, God will help us. God will help us all to become holy, but we need to do our part. In doing apostolate, it is through God by which individuals get converted. However, and I repeat, we need to do our part. We have to use the means available. And in contemplating this idea, we may remember the gospel scene about the miracle of the multiplication of loaves and fishes in John chapter 6. We remember that Jesus saw the need to feed the uh, multitude that is following him. And for it, Jesus asked first for bread. He asked his disciples, do we have bread? Or how do we... How do we uh, buy bread for these? But uh, <clears throat> five loaves and two fishes were provided uh, from a boy in the crowd. And we see that there has to be, I mean, there was, uh, there was given a uh, material means. Um, the people there, the disciples, and uh, the, uh, um, those present in the crowd has done what they have, has given what they have. And Jesus multiplied them and fed the multitude. Similarly, today, when we do our apostolate, we need to use the means available because grace builds on nature. To do apostolate involves efforts and initiatives to provide for an environment suitable for such purpose. Hence, there is a, a necessity for us to provide for means to support and to sustain those apostolic instruments. The instruments I refer to include the church, the institutions doing apostolic work, and specific activities initiated by individuals pursuant to doing apostolate. There are many ways by which we can, we can do this, by which we can provide for means to support and sustain them. And one of these ways is giving financial support. Giving financial support entails generosity on our part. It involves effort in helping others become generous because uh, generosity is a virtue. And of course, we can also, while we ourselves work on it, it is good for us to help others grow in such virtue also. We need to have the disposition to undertake great things for God and mankind. Faced with something really worthwhile, like noble ideas, apostolic tasks, and God above all, a great soul gives of his own without reserve, money, effort, time. He knows well and understands the words of our Lord. No matter how much he gives, he will receive more. Give and it will be given to you. Good measure, pressed down, shaken together, running over, will be poured into your lap. For the measure you give will be the measure you get back. 
in a society which sets no bounds to its conspicuous consumption, we frequently see apostolic works and the people who have dedicated their entire lives to them, deprived of the means to continue, often subjected to privations and reorganizations, and constantly questioned as to whether they should not cease their activities and close down. Now let's let's think about this. <clears throat> Many people are willing to spend millions of pesos for say advertisements just to sell a consumer product that sometimes are not even necessary for some. I remember doing an internship in uh, one of the biggest um, companies in the food industry in the Philippines and I was surprised by how much they spend on a uh, two-minute radio ad or airtime in television, depending on the time. And of course, their expenses on advertisements placed on billboards. Uh, <clears throat> a, few, a few years after that, I asked a friend working in the advertisement industry, and he gave me an idea how much how much these advertisements may cost. And uh, I realized that there's a lot of resources poured out on those um, <clears throat> ads. Of course, there are many good ads also, but what is bad is uh, there are some which are not healthy to public morals. And yet those companies with means or those people with means still are willing to spend their resources on them. Uh, these include um, immodest images that are placed in ads. Sometimes uh, people also spend financial resources on consumer goods bordering in mindless extravagance. And then sometimes it, uh, <clears throat> it fosters caprice and vanity. And that's why um, as Christians, we ought to divert these expenditures towards things that are more worthwhile. And uh, based on those scenarios and realizations, we can be sure that there are financial resources available, except that they have to be put at the right place or to be spent in a better uh, manner into better things. <clears throat> things that would help people be closer to God can also be uh, can be uh, the uh, subject of our spending. And there are many examples of this. One is to be generous in contributing to outreach programs. Also, for those who are involved in spending for advertisements, perhaps to choose spending on ads which help promote virtues and Christian values. Uh, of course, it's up to you. It's up to uh, each one of us. It can be as simple as being consistent in giving donations during the offertory at Mass at your local parish. Uh, it can also be as big as giving a huge chunk of contribution in putting up a um, something like a conference center to provide a conducive venue for retreats and seminars. I remember there's this uh, brand which um, released a few short video clips. Um, it's actually advertisements for their uh, products, but it also contains a lot of um, values and virtues. So it's, uh, it was a very good example of that company. And I, I hope uh, many companies or people will be moved to do the same. Let's pray for that. <clears throat> the idea is we are doing so much good by giving financial support to apostolic instruments. Of course, uh, we need to have also rectitude of intention in helping. And 
that is so that the thing we are supporting can reach more people and help them grow in their interior life. The greatness of soul, our Lord asks of his own, will lead us not only to be very generous with our own time and economic means, but also to assist others to feel moved themselves to help according to their means for the good of their fellow man. Generosity always leads people closer to God. On countless occasions, this is the greatest favor we can do our friends, encourage and foster their generosity. This virtue enlarges their heart and rejuvenates them, making them younger, more capable of love. Because as we remember, love is always going towards outside, uh, outside of ourselves for others. And generosity uh, does that. Furthermore, taking on great endeavors for the good of mankind or alleviating the needs of many people or to giving glory to God can occasionally lead to the expenditure of large sums of money and to putting one's material goods at the service of those great works. The magnanimous person does that if he can without hesitation and misgivings. Living the virtue of prudence, he evaluates all the circumstances, but not with a fearful or shrinking soul. We should understand that God cannot be outdone in generosity. If we, th if we think we are generous to God and his plans, God will be more generous to us. An ancient legend from, from the East uh, tells of a kingdom where the subjects were obliged to present a gift to the king whenever they would meet him. One day, a humble peasant found himself in the royal presence, empty-handed. So he cupped a little water in his hands and made this his offering. The king was so pleased with the devotion of this peasant that he bestowed upon him a bowl full of gold coins. The Lord is more generous than all the kings of the earth. He has promised to reward us 100 fold of this life and in the life to come. God wants us to be happy in this life. Those who follow the Lord with generosity will experience his peace and joy. The Lord is waiting for us to offer our work, the difficulties of daily life, our deeds of service, the gift of our time and energy to others. Hence, generosity, again, is not limited to giving material or financial um, support. It also involves um, giving our time and our energy and our effort in the apostolic instrument. But of course, uh, well, this talk is more of uh, elaborating on the uh, generosity and giving financial support to these instruments. It is necessary to go beyond the limits of strict justice in imitation of, of the exemplary conduct of the widow who teaches us to give with generosity even that which is meant for our own needs. Above all, one must remember that God does not measure human actions by a standard which stops at the appearance of how much is given. God measures according to the standard of the interior values of how one places oneself at the disposal of one's neighbor. He measures according to the degree of love with which one freely dedicates oneself to the service of the brethren. Point number one of the uh, book called Foro reads, there are many Christians who are persuaded that the redemption will be completed 
in all environments of the world and that there have to be some souls they do not know which ones who will contribute to carrying it out with Christ. But they think it will take centuries, many centuries. It would be an eternity if it were to take place at the rate of their self-giving. That was the way you yourself thought until someone came to wake you up. So um, having read this passage, uh, it may also move us to think if we are being generous enough in uh, taking part in the, um, the redemption, the uh, salvation. It, it also moves us to think whether we are doing concrete steps or concrete ways of uh, trying to help out in these apostolic instruments. It's good for us to keep in mind that when we are generous and when, when we take part in these apostolic instruments, we are uh, doing a lot of good and we are actually uh, making this, this uh, um, plan of God into um, fulfillment. We are, in effect, um, rolling up our sleeves and giving up our uh, selfishness in order to um, fulfill the plan of God. And that is for everyone to, be, uh, to fulfill their vocation to sainthood. So to take away, apostolic instruments are in need also of financial support in order to sustain itself. Second, when we give financial uh, support to these instruments with rectitude of intention, we are doing so much good because that will provide for a good environment for people to resort to and a venue to help people grow in their interior life. And lastly, our generosity should lead us to assist our friends also to become generous. Sometimes we have friends that just look for something they can contribute to in promoting the good in the society. Uh, and what is better than apostolic instruments which promote virtues and sanctity? Hence, uh, there should be nothing that prevents us from um, assisting our friends and encouraging them to uh, give support on these apostolic instruments. And uh, one thing also we can keep in mind in um, assisting our friends in, uh, to become generous in these instruments is that we are not doing it for, for our own interest or self-interest. We're not doing it for uh, anything else but simply, in, um, we're doing it for, uh, for God. We're doing it for uh, supporting something that is concretely directed into helping others be closer to God. Hence, um, in continuing this, in this recollection, let us talk to God for some resolutions we may get out of this, um, of this uh, talk. In this, this recollection. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Saint Gabriel, pray for us. Saint Paul, pray for us. Holy Mary, our hope, seat of wisdom, pray for us.
In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit, Amen. My Lord and my God, I firmly believe that you are here, that you see me, that you hear me. I adore you with profound reverence, and beg your pardon for my sins, and the grace to spend this time of prayer fruitfully. My Immaculate Mother, St. Joseph, my Father and Lord, the Guardian Angel, intercede for me. So our topic for our meditation will be um, one essential aspect of the spiritual life um, that St. Jose Maria Escriva um, referred to as uh, unity of life. Um, so by, by this he meant that um, in our relationship with Jesus, <clears throat> each time more personal, each time um, more present in everything that we do, um, all the aspects of our life um, more and more will uh, come to have just one goal, uh, which is to love God, um, and to glorify Him in everything, um, it will have um, just one meaning, and um, that is to seek Christ in all we do and, and find Him and love Him and identify ourselves with Him. And, um, and one fruit, which is well, the, the peace and joy that we will have in our heart and the peace and joy that we will also be sowing in the hearts of those around us. So unity of life. Um, so our, our lives are not compartmentalized um, and you know we end up being um, one me at one time when I'm with a certain group of people and then uh, when I'm with another group of people I ha I'm, I'm another me like uh, there, there's no uh, there's no unity um, in who I am what I do my attitudes towards things and um, and so this is the unity of life that um, characterized us as a soul that um, loves our Lord you know, with um, its whole heart, its whole soul, and um, all mind and all strength. Um, um, you know, we're now in the month of uh, October. That's, this is the month of the Rosary. And, um, and this is um, a theme that, uh, can help us um, you know, meditate on the different um, mysteries of our Lord's life. Huh? Uh, you know, there are, there are four um, different sets of mysteries, you know, uh, the joyful, the, the luminous, the, the glorious, the, the sorrowful, and then the glorious, you know, different, um, different periods of Jesus' life. Mm -hmm. um, and, and yet, we know that uh, all throughout um, those 33 years you know, that Jesus spent uh, on earth, uh, he was only doing one thing. You know? uh, he had only one mission, only one goal, right? only one desire, and, and that was well, to fulfill um, the redemptive uh, work you know, that uh, the Father had entrusted him with. You know? And um, and so, well, one of the fruits of our desire to get close to Jesus this month of October through the recitation of the Holy Rosary can be precisely this, um, um, you know, to, to live unity of life, that our, our life is really integrated into one piece, um, and it's, um, it's directed to only one goal, um, and inspired by only one love. Um. So this is what we see as we meditate on the 
the different mysteries of the rosary uh, that uh, that whether we are in the joyful or whether we are in the um, luminous or sorrowful or glorious mysteries um, well we are just meditating on one single um, mystery and and that's the person of jesus christ himself a perfect god and perfect man um, who is our way our truth and our life um, so jesus went through different experiences um, uh, together with uh, mary and joseph um, but um, there was only one life there was only one jesus huh? not a different jesus now and then afterwards an, a, another jesus um, af later on um, but only one jesus carrying out only one mission with only one desire um, and that's to bring all of us to heaven and and that's why the whole life of jesus and this should also be your life and mine, because uh, our Lord is our way. Um, he's, our, he's our truth and our life. He's the one who gives meaning to everything that we do. Um, well, uh, these different mysteries of the Holy Rosary are just but different expressions of um, the one prayer of Jesus Christ as eternal high priest. Huh? Just one priestly prayer, which began... Um, the moment of his conception, and it continued uh, through the years he spent, um, well, a short time in Bethlehem and then in Egypt, and, and then for a long time in Nazareth, and then throughout, the pal for the, throughout Palestine, uh, as, as he was preaching, his public ministry, and then fi finally reaching a climax at Calvary, uh, where he was uh, crucified, died, and he was buried and then he rose gloriously so the life of jesus was one continuous uninterrupted prayer huh? uh, one continuous um, offering of himself huh? a sacrifice of love self-giving love to the father and um, and and to all of us to each man because Jesus became incarnate for each one of us. And this prayer was expressed now as adoration, now as thanksgiving, now as atonement, and now as supplication for our redemption. And, um, and this can be one of the fruits uh, of our praying the rosary. Uh, and we can ask this grace... Um, from our Lord through the intercession of Mother Mary, um, that um, our entire life, you know, which is composed of different activities, everything becomes interwoven into a single fabric. You know? One single offering, one single prayer. Uh, because, well, um, we only have one heart. You know? one heart with which to love God, one, one heart to, with which to love our, our, our family, uh, one heart with which to love our, our country. And it's in that heart where uh, Jesus wants to reign. And um, it is that heart that we have to identify you know, with the sacred heart of Jesus and so that more and more we um, come to... Uh, have the same sentiments as the heart of Jesus. Uh, we, we see things um, from his point of view. You know, we process things um, the way he would process them. Um, and in that way, uh, more and more, uh, our life um, will be patterned after the life of Christ. Uh, um, only one heart, um, identified with uh, the sacred heart of Jesus and the immaculate heart of Mary, uh, only one love, no? and and this is the love that comes from above, the, the love that is poured into our hearts by the Holy Spirit who is given to us. No? The same love no? that, um, that Jesus has for us, no? and um, that love which he was referring to when he said, well, this is my commandment, my new commandment, that, um, that you love one another as I have loved you. No? And uh, it is by this love, which is a gift of the Holy Spirit. It's a, it's a supernatural virtue 
infused into our souls, right? When we are in the state of sanctifying grace. And, um, well, thanks to which uh, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit uh, dwell in our hearts. Huh? And this is the love that brings us to love God wholeheartedly and all others you know, with that love, with that self-same love that Jesus has for them. And, um, well, the, the fruit of all of this yeah, is that um, our life mm, um, becomes all of a peace. Mm? And our love, our heart, well, it's, it's not that um, uh, I have one part of my heart for God and then another part of my heart for the members of my family and then another part of my heart um, for my uh, colleagues at work and another part for my country no but um, but one heart one love um, where um, the father the son and the holy spirit uh, reign mm? so and our lives are not um, compartmentalized huh? um, but um, is one life huh? and um, we're all of a piece huh? uh, just like um, the different moments of uh, the life of Jesus. Um, everything for the Father and, and all, everything um, for, for you and for me. Well, and this is what uh, St. Jose Maria um, described as um, uh, the unity of life. Um, that um, doing everything for the glory of God and the salvation of souls uh, brings about. Um, um, unity of life, as he was one to describe it, and that um, that is that that makes us simple um, and strong. Um, um, simple because, uh, well, we uh, we only uh, have one goal, which we pursue single-mindedly, um, and um, it makes us simple because um, uh, it makes us live facing God alone and and not um, you know. Uh, being concerned before we make any decision about what what impression we will make or the way people will what they will think of me or what they will say about me huh? that makes us uh, very complicated huh? and makes us lose our peace huh? and uh, and um, which um, uh, leads us to uh, working but with a view to um, uh, well, the rewards uh, only here on earth and, and not um, looking forward to the rewards that um, only our Father God can give us. Um, so it makes us simple. Um, with, th with that simplicity that uh, really, even from the human point of view, is very, uh, is very beautiful, uh, very disarming. Mm -hmm. That simplicity, because, well, I, I live always facing God and not facing men mm, with a view to uh, the way our Lord thinks of me and not you know, worried about what people might say or think about me. So it makes it's a unity of life that makes us simple and strong. Um, uh, strong because, um, because we are not fragmented. Um, uh, strong because uh, we live um, a well-integrated life. Um, everything um, is harmonized. Uh, everything is directed to only one one meaning. Uh, uh, well, let us let us ask uh, our Lord for this. Um, um, uh, Lord, help me to meditate more on Your life um, and pray the Rosary with um, with more faith and 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 with more love, uh, so that um, as fruit of that. Well, my, my life, as I go through the different um, um, duties of my day and the, the different, uh, the different uh, experiences um, and, and ups and downs that uh, life brings with it, well, uh, still, well, it is directed to you alone. One parable in the Gospel, uh, the parable of the Great Supper, uh, in St. Luke, um, chapter 14 um, um, can help us um, meditate on this um, need for unity of life. Huh? So this is the parable of the Great Supper where um, 
once our, our Lord was um, in a banquet and one of the dinner guests on hearing our Lord speak, uh, he said to him, blessed is anyone who will eat bread in the kingdom of God. And, and then Jesus said to him, someone gave a great dinner right, and invited many. And at the time for the dinner, he sent his servants to say to those who had been invited, well, come, because everything is now ready. But they all alike began to make excuses. So the first said uh, to the servant, well, I have bought a piece of land and I must go out and see it. Uh, please accept my regrets. And then another said, well, I have bought five yoke of oxen and I'm going to try them out. Uh, please accept my regrets. And yet another said, well, I have just been married and therefore I cannot come. So all the, um, all the people in the guest list, well, what were they, 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 in effect, what they, their reply was, well, uh, thank you, but, but uh, no thank you. And so the, slave, the, the servant returned and reported this to his master, and, and then the owner of the house beca became angry and said to his servant, well, go out at once into the streets and lanes of the town and bring in the poor, the crippled, the blind, and the lame. And the slave said, Sir, what you have ordered has been done, and there is still room. Then the master said, Go out into the roads and lanes and compel people to come in so that my house may be filled. For I tell you, none of those who were invited will taste my dinner. Hmm? Um, well, we can ask, well, what is this great dinner? Huh? Um, what was the food um, that was um, that had been prepared and was being, now being offered huh, for the guests? And what was wrong with the reasons of those invited who could not go? After all, one had to attend to um, uh, you know his um, his business. The other one had to attend to um, some matters that he had just uh, items that he had just purchased. Uh, and another, of course, I just got in married. So what was um, what was wrong with uh, the uh, the excuses that uh, they had not to go? Well, it was not so much because um, you know uh, they did not want to go, as because they had other more important things to do, uh, which were higher in their priority list, and and therefore their answer, well, I, I just don't have time for this. Um, um, and, um, and well, here, our, our Lord is inviting uh, you and me now uh, to this supper that, well, he himself has prepared, um, uh, where it is his flesh, his body, and his blood uh, that uh, he offers for us to eat in order to nourish our interior life. Um, and, um, and this parable is an, is a, an opportunity for us to examine ourselves and um, and ask, well, what exactly are the priorities of my life? Um, if I were to make a, um, a list of, um, say, uh, my top um, priorities, what would be in the first place? And what would be in the second place? And what would be in the third place? Um, and, and where would I put the Lord? Where would I put my relationship with, uh, with Jesus? Um, Will it be in the second place? Will it be in the, in the third place? Well, um, our, our Lord um, wants everything. He wants our whole heart. Huh? Uh, and, and everything, our, our Lord tells us, everything else will be given to us besides. So uh, seek first the kingdom of God and his justice. Uh, Seek everything, in everything, um, the glory of God and the salvation of souls, well, in whatever we do, um, uh, at home, in the office, um, in social life, 
No? In school, if we seek first the kingdom of God and his justice, everything else um, will fall into place. No? And um, I, I recall there was a get-together with Saint, um, well, with Blessed uh, Alvaro del Portillo, no? the successor of Saint Jose Maria, uh, as um, the head of Opus Dei. And uh, in this get-together, there was one person who asked him, um, you know, what he could tell uh, friends whom well, he was inviting, uh, you know, to, uh, you know, spiritual means of formation, doctrinal means of formation, um, what uh, he could tell friends of his who were very busy, just like he was, um, when they would tell him that they had no time. And um, Blessed Alvaro del Portillo uh, replied as, um, well, uh, um, uh, you know, with with that um, with that idea, you know, uh, you know, if you were you ask him to make a, a list of priorities in his life and ask him to uh, to examine where the Lord would be, you know, and um, and and then in, and make him help him to see that that um, well, the Lord must always be in the first place, and if He is given the first place, everything else will fall into their pro proper place. Huh? And um, and so that's the the value you know, of um, you know uh, you know having uh, you know uh, always uh, in the first place our our prayer life you know? and and to have a a plan you know, for our prayer life you know, that will help us live our day always in the presence of God and and doing things always you know, uh, for the glory of God and the salvation of souls you know, with the upright with an upright intention. Um, so I, I recall here um, um, one um, one anecdote where uh, a, a journalist who was um, observing what uh, Mother Teresa of Calcutta uh, and her her nuns um, were were doing you know, the missionaries of, of charity uh, caring for the poorest of the poor. You know? And um, this uh, journalist, um, you know, commented to uh, Mother Teresa of Calcutta that um, you know she couldn't um, just imagine where Mother Teresa, she and all her her nuns, all her spiritual daughters, um, got the strength and motivation uh, to do all of that, which was um, really hard work. And um, Mother Teresa, or Saint uh, Teresa of Calcutta, uh, replied the following way: um, You know that uh, we, that that journalist was was correct, and it was not just hard work; it was hard labor. Huh? And and she said that she herself wouldn't be able to last one week uh, doing what uh, she was doing if if it were not for the fact um, that every day. Uh, they began the day with um, uh, with a period of prayer in front of the tabernacle and with Holy Mass and with Holy Communion. Mm -hmm. And that at the end of the day, they, they, um, uh, they, uh, they ended the day uh, with uh, one hour of um, adoration with the Blessed Sacrament exposed huh, on the altar of their houses. And, um, and then she explained, you know, um, you know, I get all my strength from from this, from the Eucharist, huh? from my life of prayer, because um, that same faith that makes me see Christ um, in the poorest of the poor, well, I I draw from my faith in uh, Jesus in the Holy Mass, huh? uh, Jesus in the in the Sacred Host, huh? because that that faith, faith in the real presence of Christ in the in the Eucharist, and and faith. In seeing Christ in the poorest of the poor, that faith is just one, and uh, and so um, we we see here that um, you know very important means. In fact, the way to um, to grow in this um, unity of life, you know, is um, to always keep our life of prayer strong. Um, and and to have um, a plan of life, you know, uh, you know so that uh, our our day 
um, you know, uh, transpires oh, um, not only with the um, with, with the with a certain rhythm of, of work, but also following a certain rhythm of, of prayer, <clears throat> like beginning our 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 day you know, with um, with some prayer, or or if we can you know, with uh, with a mass, and then um, maybe some other moment of the day, um, you know, the rosary. And um, at twelve o'clock, the Angelus, um, and and so on, uh, so that we are always in the presence of God, and um, in that way we um, you know, we get the strength um, to do everything out of love for our Lord. Well, to end, I I'd like to um, well uh, refer to another anecdote. Um, th this one also. Um, involved uh, Blessed Alvaro del Portillo <laughs> when he made a trip to Dublin in um, 1980. Um, well, the the story has a tragic note, but uh, but always also uh, there is uh, there is an underlying uh, note of um, of joy uh, and hope for heaven. So this concerned a, a member of Opus Dei. Um, supernumerary, uh, so, so so married with, with a family, um, who was killed in a train accident, um, you know, shortly before, um, well, actually the same day that Blessed Alvaro uh, arrived in Dublin, the August of 1980. So, um, so the members of the work described to Blessed Alvaro what had happened, you know, that before leaving home, um, this um, member of Opus Dei, was, whose name was John, <clears throat> he prepared breakfast for his wife, uh, who was still recovering from childbirth. And after serving her breakfast, he got some documents together so that he could um, work on them while going to uh, his office on the train. And it was while he was uh, there in the train that the accident happened and he, he was killed. Uh, well, there was one, um, there was one person uh, there in the get together who said, "Well, I, I guess um, John died while working." Okay? So, of course, this is very much um, at the center of the spirit of Opus Dei, you know, to sanctify one's ordinary work. So he's, um, he was implying, "Well, he he died sanctifying himself through his work." And then another uh, person also in that get-together who was listening, he said, or, or maybe he was praying, huh? um, which is really the same thing. Huh? Because we, we, um, we turn our work into prayer and our prayer into work. Huh? That's the unity of life. And then, Blessed Alvaro, he added, or, or maybe John was resting. Huh? So a person who works uh, has the right to rest. <clears throat> My children. Um, and... Um, um, Rest um, um, must come as a consequence of working, uh, and it must be, serve also as a preparation for working. So, uh, so to rest is to do is something good and holy also. So this is the unity of life um, that um, well uh, is is an essential part um, of that deep relationship that um, we strive to cultivate with our Lord. Um, and um, even though we are asked by, by Jesus to uh, remain in the middle of the world, um, uh, involved uh, you know, uh, to the hilt um, in, um, in sanctifying our work and uh, fulfilling our, our ordinary duties uh, at home, in the office, or in society, uh, everything you know, becomes prayer, everything becomes uh, lifted up to our Lord for His glory and the salvation of souls. So we ask our, our Blessed Mother, you know, who accompanied uh, Jesus so closely in all the mysteries of his, of his life here on earth, um, and who shared uh, that same love and in that same, that same prayer most perfectly. Uh, well, let's commend ourselves to her so that we also, like our Lord, um, uh, receive this grace um, to live our life only for God and for his glory and for the love of souls.
I thank you, my God, for the good resolutions, affections, and inspirations that you have communicated to me this meditation. I beg your help in performing them. My Immaculate Mother, St. Joseph, my Father and Lord, my Guardian Angel, intercede for me.